Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another gratitude podcast interview special guest regarding the pandemic. And I was thinking about this young lady today, how I always like to throw in something that is meaningful. And I remember after about four or five people said, you should meet Lenore Edwards. I thought, well, guess I guess I maybe should meet her somewhere along. And I met her and have become good friends and just been a huge influence on my life. But uh, Lenora Edwards. Lenora, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks, David. You bet. You bet. So as I've mentioned in several of the podcasts, too, I'm really looking to get some perspective on this from people across uh, different walks of life, if you will, how they're dealing with it. So my first question is, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Um, regular exercise. Definitely. I have been uh, attending to my yoga and Pilates religiously. My instructor initially had said, oh, my studio's closed. I'm so sorry. And I said, let me show you how to use Zoom. Oh, and cool. so we work out virtually one to one. And also now we have another person we've introduced into our sessions and it's been fantastic. And that regular discipline makes me feel so much better. It's so true. And I think I read a lot of books, somebody getting to be my age about what, what's been some of the best things you can do. And almost every book says exercise is number one. So yoga, Pilates, exercise is great. So as the gratitude guy and really focusing on gratitude, have you noticed what you're grateful for? Has it changed before the pandemic to now? Or is it kind of the same? Or how is what you focus on to be grateful for? What has, if it has at all changed? You know, it hasn't changed. Um, I think it's, it's increased my, um, this pandemic and the situation we're all in, it's increased my appreciation for being self-employed, mm. um, for having my own business, for being able to steer the ship, to decide as I, new information comes in, as I see new things and observe trends, that I can adjust as needed and I have full control over that. Mm. Excellent. That's really true. That's really true. And as somebody who I, I can never think of a better term other than juggles a lot of balls, you're very driven, motivated, inspiring. You do a lot of things. So we're into our fifth, I think, sixth week of this now. But any ideas, thoughts, tips, comments of what people can maybe do while they're, you know, housebound, if you will? Oh, it's a great time to get organized. <laughs> Personally, I mean, you know, just to recognize that we're all going to be super busy as things rev up. It's not mm. going to be like a light switch gets turned on. I think it's going to be a, a, something that happens in phases. But I think it's a great time to get organized and literally get your house in order. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, get your office in order. Make sure your technology is working really well. And it's a wonderful time to re-examine all the aspects of your business and why are you doing things the way you're doing them. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, it's a wonderful time to innovate, to try new things, experiment with clients. I've stayed in contact with my clients um, and inv I invited uh, my alumni clients to a call and to see, you know, like what does everybody need? What is, what Very can nice. we provide one another? And I've had a wonderful, you know, like 45 to 50 people on Zoom calls um, two nice. different times. So um, it's good to hear and be realistic about what people really want and, mm -hmm. and need rather than what I thought they need, because it, it's sometimes a little different. So um, great to get organized, great to like make sure I'm still really listening to what's happening out there. And of course, it always makes me feel good, feel good to be a helper. <laughs> you bet, yeah. yes, Lenora. So on those Zoom calls, 45, 50 people, you said what they need. Was there one or two things that was kind of at the top of their list or was there a common denominator maybe from some of them? The most common thing that when I ask the question, what do you need at this point is connection, connection, oh, wow. the feeling of being connected to the community. And um, so toward that end, you know, I, I make sure that as I moderate the conversation, we use the, we use the chat box on the side to answer mm -hmm. questions and I can mm -hmm. call on people that way and keep it, keep it rolling. Um, it's interesting to hear how the cross pollination of ideas is felt as such a support. And I've followed up both calls by, connecting them in groups so that they can get to know one another um, better. And I know as a matchmaker, I'm kind of good at knowing like what the common themes are between people. So it's been really fun to hear feedback as far as the personal and professional connections and what they got out of it. 
That's neat. And you mentioned Zoom too before we started the call about how I think of all the sadness and the bad aspects of this and people dying and suffering and so on and so forth. You take just one thing, and I made a list of a bunch of them, 10 or 20, but just look at Zoom as an example. Just some of this, you and I are sitting, and it looks like we're three or four feet apart. We might as well be at Starbucks without the lattes, and it right. looks like we're just a few feet. So that technology and so many other aspects of this really mean there's a lot of silver linings to this whole thing. Oh, I'm thrilled that the IT infrastructure is holding up. You know, a lot of people demonize Comcast. I must mm -hmm. tell you, Comcast is my provider of of uh, Wi-Fi and internet at home and um, knock on wood, it's been working terrific. And Zoom has been fantastic. I've just, I've taught everyone I know how to use Zoom, you know, include my instructor, as I mentioned. But even my mother, who's about to turn 85, is using Zoom now. Oh, great. Uh, in fact, she and I are taking a webinar together later this afternoon. So I'm really excited about, um, about that. Too. Yeah, it's, it's a great technology to take advantage of. And, and you think we know this is going to end sometime. We don't know when. Mm -hmm. is it, will there be a vaccine? What will happen? And then when we uh, you know, start getting the country back on its feet again or what have you. But is there anything that Lenora is thinking about that I'm going to hit the ground running when this thing does end that's different from what you're doing now? That maybe because you have this time to really think about when it does sort of open up again? Well, I... Gosh, you know, the thing I'm noticing with Zoom uh, meetings versus in person is basically I'm seeing my clients all on Zoom mm -hmm. versus, um, you know, in person. I'm noticing that using this technology, you know, um, it's much more intense. We're looking at each other in this screen in this little box. I remember when we were growing up, our parents yelled at us and said, don't sit too close to the TV. You'll ruin right, your eyes. Right. Of course, right. I'm like, here it is. <laughs> it's happening now. Um, but what I'm noticing is the meetings take less time. Mm. I'm noticing that my clients, I have like three clients I'm working with where instead of one big meeting for 90 minutes each week, we're meeting in like either two 45 minute meetings or mm -hmm. a space apart or three 30 minute meetings where it's very sprinty. Right. Um, and therefore they're feeling like they get quick traction and momentum going and yeah, check in with me more often. And I'm noticing those clients in particular are very productive because it's not a big project they're working on. It's broken up into small bites and I can engage with them. Like they can text me and say, can we jump back on zoom and talk about something? So it's almost like nice. we're all in the same office building wow. and stopping in on the door frame and saying, Hey, will you check out this proposal I wrote? Or I'm wow. getting ready to send an email. Let's take a look at that messaging together. And so there's another, even though we're farther apart, uh, there's another kind of intimacy and a, an accessibility mm -hmm. that we have now. And my schedule, since it's not clogged with driving anywhere, right. um, I have more flexibility during the day. That doesn't mean I'm just working a million hours because what I'm making sure I do is I am taking those breaks for exercise. I take walks around the neighborhood and yes, there's house cleaning too, mm, yeah, <laughs> you know, which is yeah. another, you know, 10 minutes, you can get a little something done as far as the task around the house and then get right back at it. That's neat. And as far as what you mentioned about the clients, Lenora, mm -hmm. the, do you think some of it's because there's less distractions? I mean, you're just so focused and, and I know it's funny because I'll look at like your eyes, right? Normally I look at you, but I really look at the camera, which is where <laughs> you're looking direct. So it's kind of, it's almost you concentrate more because you're really focused. So do you think maybe it's, yeah. there's less distractions when you mentioned two 45 minutes versus a 90 minute? Yeah, I, I agree. That's a really good point. There are less distractions. I mean, let's face it, we're not out running errands. We're not, um, it, we're not tied up in different intermittent kinds of things. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain. Like, I think, well, where did all my time go? I, yeah, a lot of time it was commuting, driving, planning, um, <laughs> trying to avoid traffic, mm -hmm. things like that. Well, now there are these blocks of time that are super focused and yeah. it's an interesting you know you now that you mention it i'm really you are right it is there are fewer distractions i mean there are there are fewer things to do on some level from the outside world it's all queued right. up from the inside well and it almost feels funny again if we were having a coffee like at common grounds or anything like this and yeah. you look around and like to me if i'm talking to you like right now if i was doing all this it'd be like you're not paying attention, Laura, get back on the camera here. So I think there is a sort of focus too. And with, with that being said, last question is, do you have sort of a, maybe before, during this pandemic or whatever, sort of a, a quote, a philosophy, a life sort of thing that you look at that kind of guides you through maybe a saying or something that has sort of been, this has always been my mantra, that's sort of the overarching philosophy of Lenora as she goes through life and then through something like this? Yes, that's funny you should say that because I was thinking about it the other day. The one with the most choices wins. Mm, 
Oh, I like that. That's what it's all about is having choices, having options, being able to decide what is best, especially as things change. Because, you know, we could all, in fact, I was joking around with a client about, remember when we used to make 10 year business plans, (laughs) then it was five years, then it was three years. Now it sounded 18 months, you know, and it's probably down to six months right about now, just because there's all, all this uncertainty, but having choices, having options, having different ways that we can choose to proceed where we get to leverage our strengths and the strengths of the market. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a huge, huge thing to keep in the back of our minds because it it, it creates autonomy and agency and and positivity and confidence when we operate out of a sense of choice. And it's so good because I've thought back, looking back in my life and the people I've interacted with so many times that the, the big measuring stick is money. And it used to be who got the best grades or who had the best sports team or the best results in sports or something. And then we get into the business world and we grow up and it becomes money. He's yeah. got more money. She's got more money. And yet really you're exactly right. It comes down to whoever has the most choices wins. I mean, you've got options and that's really kind of what I think it's all about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's great. That's great. Well, just as I suspected, I got a number of good nuggets from you. Thank you so much for being on the Gratitude Podcast, Miss Lenora Edwards. Well, I'm grateful for you, David. Thank you for inviting me. It's been fun. Thanks a lot. Okay.